Good morning. Good morning. And it's uh, Sunday the 4th of October, we're into October already. And uh, isn't it kind of nice on a crispish sort of morning? Yeah, I was just morning. looking at the colours of the trees. They're, they're suddenly gone, a lovely yeah, colour, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, beautiful. beautiful it Autumn is, yes. Autumn is beautiful. It is, really yeah. Is. Well, and well, the good we'll thing is we've, good. Got heat, we've got heat in the church this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not freezing to yes, death like we were. that's good. That's really week, very so good. So that's great. Yes. So I hope you're doing okay. And um, well, it's good to be meeting together with church once again with yes. Church Online. So, so glad that you could join with us this morning. Yes. So Helen, you've got a verse for us. I have got a verse to start us off. And I was praying this morning and thinking about, as you do, all the stuff that's going on, all the news and the statistics and things and how easy it is to allow our minds to just go down that worry track and to go down that um, what if track, you know? And, uh, I was reading in John's Gospel in verse 27, well-known scripture, but it was so good. I'll read it to you. It says, Jesus speaking here, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I was, as I was sort of pondering on the verse, I thought it says, it says, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, there's a possibility that you can let your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we really need in these days to make that choice to not go down the trouble path um, and to, to, to be worry warts about uh, what's going on because Jesus holds out this offer of his peace, not as the world gives peace, but as he gives peace deep inside us that says he's in control. He knows us, he knows the days ahead. And so there, there's that choice that we have to let our hearts not be troubled or let our hearts be troubled. So I'm choosing peace this morning. I'm choosing the peace that the Lord gives and I give him thanks for that. So I hope you'll come with me and choose peace as we lift our voices and our hearts to, to worship God this morning. That's lovely, yeah, thank you. And if you joined us for the first time, a real special welcome mm. to you as well. And uh, we're gonna be singing some songs in our homes of uh, praise and worship to God. So handing over to Duke Morag in Locker Briggs to lead us in the first of that. Thanks, Mark. And church, we're just gonna worship now. We've got a, we've got a song we're gonna sing for you live. And we've got a song that's recorded as well. And uh, it's just an opportunity for us to lay aside all the cares of last week and all the worries of the week to come and just focus your hearts on Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us, knowing that he's with you in every way. Amen. Surrender this will be my anthem forever. This will be. 
Two great songs there, and uh, it's so good to, to lift up God's presence, lift up his nature, and, and lift up our voices in worship to him. It makes such a difference, doesn't it, in our lives, especially when we're surrounded by bad news and stuff going on, and, you know, we don't know what's happening next. But we have an anchor and a, and a, and a real sense of security in God. And in the Old Testament, it talks quite often about God being a refuge, being a rock. He's solid and secure. And whatever else happens in life, then we can get ourselves into that place of safety and security. And one of the great ways, one of the 
you know, ways that he's created for us to be able to do that is by worshipping him. So worship isn't just about, you know, adoring God and making him feel good. It's actually about making our hearts right so that we're putting him in the right place in our thinking and in our emotions and in our whole being. So, so bless you this morning as uh, you've been singing along with those two worship songs. And um, I, th I know that people have had some birthdays this week. It seems to have been a birthday week, doesn't it, really? So happy birthday to you. And I see from Facebook that it's Patrick Lawrenson's birthday as well today. So uh, something about um, September and October seems to be a birthday peak. <laughs> so... Uh, so those of us that have birthdays at other times were equally important, of course, but uh, especially nice to, to wish happy birthday to people who have their birthdays. Right, uh, if you'd like to get some um, things together for communion, I'm going to hand over to Helen and she'll uh, introduce that. And uh, you, but in the meantime, if you can grab from the kitchen or whatever uh, a glass, a couple of glasses, or put some liquid in of some sort that's uh, drinkable and then uh, get something representing bread, might be bread, and we can share communion together. Helen. Yeah. Um, I was reading as well in um, Hebrews, and I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. It says, as members of the Church of the Firstborn, all our names have been legally registered as citizens of heaven, and we've come before God who judges all and who lives among the spirits of the righteous who've been made perfect in his eyes. We've come to Jesus, who established a new covenant with his blood sprinkled upon the mercy seat, blood that continues to speak from heaven forgiveness, a better message than Abel's blood that cries from the earth, justice. And I, I was reminded of the song, and we're going to listen to this in a, in a few minutes while we spend some moments uh, uh, taking communion together, but in our homes and things, um, about the better word that we speaks, it says that Jesus, the mediator of the new government, speaks better things. It's, he speaks a better word over our lives. And I think, as Mark was saying, in these days where what comes at us is very depressing, you know, we, we see um, leaders of our world shouting insults at each other and we think, where's wisdom in this? Where is, where is the wise leadership that we need in these days and where are we going to find our strength and where are we going to find our hope if the leaders of our nations are more childish than children sometimes and uh, it, it, it can be very scary to go down that and so as we come to take communion this morning I want us to look at this song that is going to be playing while we're doing it about speaking a better word. And it's like I was saying at the beginning about the peace, that we can choose peace. Jesus says he gives us peace, um, not as the world gives it, but that he gives us peace and then says, let not your heart be troubled. And I think in all these things, we can choose the better words that we speak over ourselves. We can choose to say, I'm aching, I'm sore, I'm, I'm, I'm not well this morning. Or we can speak the better word that Jesus' blood brings healing over our lives. We can, we can um, speak what we see in the news, that all oh, things are a mess and I don't know what's going to happen. Or we can speak the better word of Christ over our lives, that he knows the way that we take and he's gone before us. He's in our future and he has prepared good things for us. We can speak the better words of scripture over our lives. And I think as we come to remember what Jesus did, let us this morning in our homes, where we are, whether you're on your own or with somebody else, then let's speak these better words of truth over our lives as we take bread and as we take wine and remember that Jesus came to fulfill the obligation of the old covenant, that he's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He, he, do, he doesn't need to do it again, like in the old covenant. They had to keep bringing sacrifices, but that sacrifice has been made once and for all. And we can take our, uh, those better things, the better covenant that he has, has uh, shed his blood for and given his life for, and, and choose to let our hearts 
not be be at peace and not be troubled. Um, so as we um, take the bread and the wine, and we're just going to watch this video, and I want you to take it in your own time and speak the better words, think the better words. It's not a matter of mind over matter. It's a matter of taking the living word of God and the truths of God's word and making them stronger than the words that we so quickly speak over our lives, which are not always as fruitful and up uplifting as the word of God. So as we spend a few minutes listening to this video, take your bread, take your wine, share it with each other and speak better words of life over your lives today in Jesus' name. a better word. so much for that and pastor mark pastor helen and um, that song is really a powerful song isn't it yeah um we're just going to continue now um with our praise and prayer and um, so we have a couple of praise reports which is great and um, so baby ronnie um i think earlier this week she was taken to the hospital due to health and weight concerns because i think she wasn't gaining weight or something um but god is a good god and just over 24 hours after that, there's been a massive improvement in her health and her weight and is now actually back home with her parents and her siblings and just continuing to improve, gain weight and actually get better. Hallelujah. So good. And also, Mr. DeVee Santos here is, um, my husband, is now officially... <laughs> 
the chaplain of Queen of the South. It's official now. It's on the website and everything. So you know, if you're free, just have a look at the article that they wrote about him. And with the prayer request, um, we have one um, from Viv, her sister-in-law Louise. Um, she started chemo for her lymphoma in her stomach, which is actually causing her pain and is affecting her kidneys. So let's just declare healing over her and complete restoration um, of her body from her head to her toe, okay? So let's pray, church. Um, Father, thank you so much for this week you've blessed us with. Thank you for this lovely Sunday morning. Um, and thank you that we get to worship together as a church, as a family, even though it's through live stream at the moment and at our screens. Thank you, Lord, for um, Wi-Fi and technology and the ways that we can actually still gather together virtually. Um, we're lifting up all these praise reports and prayer requests to you, Lord. We celebrate our brothers and sisters' answered prayers and victories, and we also pray together alongside those who need your grace and are going through something and needing you. Thank you, Lord, for wee baby bon uh, Ronnie, for her precious life, and that she's um, much, much better and getting much, much stronger. Uh, may you bless her and her entire family, and may they be a blessing to everyone they meet. Thank you for being with them, and may you continue to give them strength, faith, and grace. We also thank you for uh, this new chapter, a new journey in the v being appointed as the new Queen of the South chaplain. May you bless him, and may he be a blessing to the whole team and even the whole organization. Give him wisdom and give him grace to know what to do and what to say and when to do and when to say. May your light shine through him and use him to do your will in the Queen of the South, Father. Jesus, will lift up to you, Louise, who is going through chemo right now. We pray that you would shrink um, that cancer, that lymphoma in her stomach, until it completely, completely disappears in your name. And until it never comes back in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, let your healing power just um, restore her organs completely and like just restore her completely from her head to her toe. Um, Holy Spirit, um, we just pray that you would just um, be with us, Lord. Um, we, uh, may we appreciate your grace and the blessings you give us each day. And even in the days that kind of seems hopeless, especially at this season, the, the days we get um, stressed easily, may you be our light and may you be our guide to get them through those days. Uh, thank you for your Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. We honor you and we glorify you. Um, we pray that you would speak to us and guide us each day and every moment. Amen. 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 I think we're going to go into announcements. Announcements. Yes. Hey, everyone. Here is what we have going on weekly at River of Life Church. First of all, you can join us every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. on our WhatsApp group for prayer. Also, on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., hop on Zoom for a time of Bible study for Together. The River of Life Food Surplus is open every evening from 6 to 7 p.m. at the River of Life Church Building by the train station. Lastly, we have a very exciting announcement, so here to share more about it is Kristen. Hi, I'm, my name's Kirsten. Um, I'm a working mother of four. I live in Glasgow um, and there's nothing I like better than a cup of coffee and a chat with like-minded women. At this time, we're all struggling a bit with COVID and the varying demands and brain pressures it puts on our head. Um, and it's hard sometimes to be motivated and even to find a wee bit of joy in your everyday. I am a long distance supporter of Sisterhood. Um, it's at River Life Church, based in Dumfries, where my sister and husband and family worship. Um, and it's a fabulous women's group. Have a look at their website. And I can join Sisterhood from here, from Glasgow, via Zoom. And it's so easy. Um, I'm encouraged. Um, so I grab a cup of coffee in the comfort of my own home and I chat and I can listen or I can tune into conversations and I can be challenged and reassured and uplifted by some very inspiring speakers. A gift and a blessing um, is to stay connected. Sisterhood is just so good at doing that. 
So this month, why not take time for you and join Sisterhood next Saturday, the 10th of October. Hey, you've got something in your diary to look forward to. The theme this time is finding faith's journeys through brokenness. So if this speaks to you in your isolation or in your pain or in or are you discouraged or if you just want to stop in your busy world and listen, please join us at Sisterhood and be blessed. Thank you. Bye. Ladies of all ages, whether you're from our church community or not, we invite you to come and join us this Saturday at 10 a.m. for our sisterhood gathering. We'll have a time of prayer and worship. We'll get to hear stories and it'll be a great time together. So we look forward to seeing you there. That's all our announcements for today. Everyone have a great week and enjoy the rest of today's service. Bye. Wow, that sounds so exciting. Thank you so much, Lydia, for that. Um, yes, if you're a woman and you, you heard it, you don't want to miss that. On the 10th of October, be there, be there. Unfortunately, us, us guys, we are excluded from this, uh, but that's all good. Now we've come to the time in the service where uh, it's our opportunity to continue worshiping, but with our offering and our, our gifts, and um, so this is an exciting moment. This is when you get to get involved at a different level uh, with what's happening here um, at the River of Life Church. So in just a second, there's going to be the information on the screen. You can use the, uh, that QR code. And the, the one thing that's important is that we have a new bank account. So to let you know, we still have our old one as well. So um, you can still use that, but we are in transitioning to this new um, okay. bank account so, and it's already active so if you're wanting to switch to that that would be awesome um, awesome so uh, while you guys are doing that um, I'm wanting to just pass on to the next what we're we going to do we're going to do the kids video now is that right I'll send it over to the right side of the stage to Pastor Mark you take <laughs> it over Pastor Mark <laughs> that's great Thanks, Debbie. And uh, yeah, just a little explanation about why uh, a different bank account. Well, we're in the middle of changing the legal structure of the River of Life Church as becoming a skio, if you know anything about that. But uh, so uh, it's gradually trans transferring from the old uh, unincorporated organisation to the to the new Scottish charitable incorporated organization, the SCIO. So it's all technical, but it just means that we're kind of up to date with our governance and things. Um, so hence the, the new bank account. Now, don't worry if you don't have time to change that immediately. It's a transition, but uh, as you can start paying into the new account, that's good. And we'll put that in the various places that you'll see it as well, online and, uh, and, and on the WhatsApp group and things like that. So. That's a quick explanation. Now, the kids have uh, been busy once again this week, and uh, so they've produced quite a lot for us this week. So sit back and enjoy Kids Church. One day there was a man walking along, but but when he, but but when he was walking on the road, two robbers came along and beat him and beat him up, stole his money and things like that. And then they left him on the side of the road. A priest came along, and he he didn't when he saw the man, he. He uh, was afraid that he might lose his job if he touched him, so he went on the other, so he went on the opposite side of the road. Then a Levi came along, and he thought the same thing as the priest, so he went on, the, so he went on the other side. A Samaritan came along on his donkey, though, so that. 
and but he didn't walk past. He stopped and he stopped, went to the men, and bandaged him up, put him on, put him on his donkey, and went and went to Jericho, and went to Jericho. There they found an inn, and there they found an inn, and and he paid a lot of money to the owner, and said that that if it had to be done, then he'd pay more money. He'd pay more money to to the owner if if he needed to stay there for longer. And that was the story of the of the smart. Of the Good Samaritan. came by with a donkey. Oh no, a hurt guy. I have to help him. He put him on a donkey and he he rode him into town. He rode it into town. Please, help this man. He went, he he handed the man $20. When I come back into town, I will pay you more if, if, if if I need to pay you more. Welcome back. That was amazing, kids. Mm -hmm. Y'all, they just put great videos together, They're don't so they? so precious, yeah. <laughs> it's always so cool so to cool. see the different creative ways that mm -hmm. you express your stories, and I always really love this. I know last week you were saying that you you really look forward to the, oh, yeah. the children's. Mm -hmm. I, do, I totally do, too. I completely relate <laughs> to that. I love the Kids Church mm -hmm. section of our live stream. So, so um, Joanna and I are, are here. We're going to chat a little bit about King's Coffee Shop. Um, if you don't know, Joanna is a manager there at Kings, and so she's going to share a little bit about what it's been like uh, with this part mm -hmm. of the River of Life Church ministry. Uh, so first of all, uh, Joanna, could you share about what Kings is? Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kings. So it's basically like for me, Kings is home. I've worked in Kings since I was, since I actually arrived in Dumfries. Like, I'm, yeah, I wasn't even like you know, cold yet. I just arrived from the Philippines, and then Helen, Pastor Helen came up to me and offered me a job, and Fast forward to now, still there, and I'm loving every second of it. Uh, but King's is actually a Christian, um, it's a coffee shop and a bookshop that is actually owned by the River of Life Church. It's a charity that's owned by the church. So, yeah. Excellent. Very cool. And so, uh, pretty recently, uh, when was it that we, that King's Coffee Shop opened back up? I should know this. <laughs> but just to be safe, I'm just going to say, second week of... 
August. Sorry, okay. my brain is a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So pretty yeah. recently, I'll open yeah. back up, and uh, I've noticed that there's been a lot of different changes. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, and I know that y'all had to put a lot of work into that. So, what kind of changes have you made uh, to King's Coffee Shop? I like how Lydia. It's like side note. Lydia's asking me all these questions, but actually, Lydia just started working. <laughs> I <Kings>. did. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like doing this. Is like, like so. Formal. What is King? So what is it? <laughs> um, yeah, but it changes. Like as you know, like you've been. Um, Actually, before lockdown, you were like the, on the customer side, weren't you? So mm -hmm. you've seen how it was. Everything yeah. was like busy and packed and stuff. But then, since lockdown happened and when we since we reopened, we've just had to change like I think a lot of stuff. Like we had to um, tidy up the books at the moment because we needed the space to be able to do social distancing and saying all that. We had to get rid of almost like half the chairs and tables that mm -hmm. we have. So you know, like we have less tables now. And also we have the, what do you call that? The acrylic things, the glass things oh, yeah, that we the have. Oh yeah, plexiglass, yeah. Yeah, around the counter, just, you mm -hmm. know, to have that barrier. And also staff has to wear um, masks the entire time they're in the shop. And so does customers when they walk in and when they're walking in the shop and walking out, they have to wear the masks. So yeah, we just have to follow the government guidelines. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So, and we have to disinfect every single thing, every single time someone else touches them or even if we touch them, so. Mm -hmm. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, uh, even before I started working at King's, I was noticing, mm -hmm. so obviously I'm a little, you know, biased. biased but, <laughs> I uh, think both are, so I, it's I, good. I'm personally very impressed with how great of a job they've done at mm -hmm. distancing everything out and uh, making sure that everything's really clean. Mm -hmm. I think that they're really doing this excellently. And so I just applaud you for all of the effort that you've put oh. into making it oh. a really safe place for mm -hmm. people to come into. But they also spruced it up recently. It's looking really nice mm -hmm. in there. You'll see that the, the floors are looking a little different. Uh, the walls are nice and, and bright Fresh, again. Yeah. And yeah, it, it, and so it's looking really nice in there. So while you can go in and feel really safe and feel mm -hmm. like everything's clean you also it doesn't feel clinical does it, it feels, no it feels yeah we so try not to make it look yeah, like that yeah what do you say about the plants what can you say about the plants i love the plants there's plants <laughs> everywhere it's like a wee forest in there which is great because mm -hmm. it kind of helps balance out the yeah know. and I, I guess it's props to peter smith for yeah. keeping those alive because yes. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I those would die if they were in my care oh, unfortunately yeah. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> i killed a few of my plants during lockdown so oh, no. <laughs> um so i would like to hear um i know that especially with lockdown happening mm -hmm. and everything else that that's been something that's been very difficult and pressing for local businesses and small businesses so mm -hmm. um, i'm curious what would you say to how we as a church community and as a community in dumfries could uh, best support and best, um, yeah, give our love to King's Coffee Shop mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah, uh, there's like a few things, but what I can think at the top of my head right now is, you know, just support your local businesses, you know, come into King's, you know, buy a coffee, buy food. We have lovely coffee and food there. I'm not being biased, it's generally it's because we try to, you know, like we try to serve um, with an excellent, you know, service. So yeah, not just King's as well. There's so many local um, independent shops and them free so if you can you know if you have the you have the time you have the money just invest in the local shops that we have because it actually helps the town center kind of like you know have like a little bit of life into it mm. and also just pray for us you know yeah. just pray that we like the same way we get blessed with finances you know with the custom coming in we pray that we can also be a blessing to others yeah. you know so that's yeah. really good and i can um as we have established, I'm a little biased, but <laughs> prior to working there, I moved here four years ago mm -hmm. and uh, I obviously moved from a different country and I didn't have any family here. I had a few friends around the town, but uh, the one place where I felt most at home immediately when I moved here was King's Coffee Shop. I would come in and spend my time working there. I would mm -hmm. find any excuse to get there. Now some of my closest friendships have been established at mm -hmm. King's Coffee Shop and I'm here at River of Life Church today <laughs> because of the amazing uh, community that's been offered to me there. So mm -hmm. while it is a business and while it is uh, something that's offering coffee and, and treats to the community, mm -hmm. it actually also is very much a ministry. And I can say that because it's ministered to me. And so mm -hmm. um, I just highly recommend, you know, giving yeah. your business to uh, King's Coffee Shop and 
on, um, really giving them a lot of love at this time yeah. uh, because they're doing so much more uh, than serving coffee. They're really serving and reaching the community with the love mm -hmm. of God and creating a positive environment for people to come into. So um, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we pray for Kings? Uh, yes, like just to add on to what you were saying that it's a ministry. Um, you, some of you might think like, oh, so it's like a fallen Christian. Yes and no. Like we don't really, when people come in, we don't say like, just go full biblical on people. No, because we respect as well people, like some people, like and we understand that that's not how everyone works. But just like, you know, that, that core value and that core attitude of like God's love, we try and show that to people. Like you've probably noticed now, you're probably starting to recognize the regulars. And most of them mm -hmm. are like elderly people who come into Kings because they live on their own. And then even they were saying that the only thing that um, that they look forward to every day is coming into Kings and seeing the staff. I'm not saying like, oh, because we're awesome. No, it's because they're saying they feel home. They feel mm. at home in Kings and they feel like they're welcome and everyone there is just nice and has that like really nice atmosphere to yeah. it that it feels like it's your living room in a sense. So yeah, in that sense, I think like, yeah, like Kings is a blessing, not just for, not just saying that as a staff, to customers but some I, I feel that as well as the yeah. staff working there like the staff around me even like pastor mark and pastor helen who's working there behind the scenes you don't see them like behind the bar but they are there they're in the mm -hmm. office they're like just working there behind the scenes they just make sure like the same way they want us to make they want to make sure that we feel um home we feel safe and we feel loved that's kind of like the same values we're trying to give and show yeah. our customers Sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Just want to be a blessing to people, you know. Oh, so good. I got a little emotional while you're talking about that. That's so, <laughs> so good. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and pray for them. Um, and, you know, we, I know that we're doing church online, but we are doing this together. So mm. if you're at home uh, and if you feel comfortable, I, I would say just like put your hand out to your screen mm -hmm. screen as you're praying and let's actually pray together at this mm -hmm. time um, for this amazing business that we have and um, and for this incredible ministry that's established in our town um, you know not just for it to survive but mm -hmm. to really thrive and yeah. be Amen. Um, a leading element in our community so all right, let's pray. Yes. Uh, Lord, thank you so much uh, for Joanna, who's here with us, and Lord, the amazing things that she does with King's Coffee Shop. Lord, she just leads that so excellently, and she uh, really puts her heart and her um, hard effort into it as well. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless her and mm -hmm. every staff member there. Yes, um, Lord, that you would bless that business, that you would bless its location, that you would bless the building. Mm -hmm. Lord, that your hand would be so present yes, on Jesus, that on that Lord. business and on oh, that Lord. ministry yes, in your name Jesus Lord we pray mm -hmm. um, for this to not struggle financially but actually to mm -hmm. to thrive Lord mm -hmm. and and for those that are coming in Lord I just pray yes. that that anyone yes. who enters in would immediately feel just the stresses of their day uh, released from them and Lord that they would feel um, that there's a difference there that they would feel um, Lord encouragement and in a, they would enter into a positive Positive environment, mm -hmm. Lord, where they can feel yes, safe, Jesus. where they can feel welcomed, mm -hmm. where they can feel accepted, and where they can mm -hmm. feel right at home. Mm -hmm. Because here at River of Life, that's our heart, is that people would feel at home mm -hmm. with us and with you. Amen. And so, Lord, I pray your every single blessing over this business, spiritually, financially, practically, Amen. Amen. Um, Lord, that you would supply every need. And uh, Lord, that you would allow this to be uh, a lighthouse to our community. Yes, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for mm -hmm. learning about Kings with us and uh, listening to what we had to share about it. And thanks for praying for us. And mm -hmm. um, you. like we said, you know, uh, we'd love your support at this time. So yeah. uh, give a lot of love to your local businesses. Um, all right. So I guess we're handing it over to your husband, right? Yes. Cool. All right. So we are going to pass it on over to Davi. What's up? Thank you so much. Well done, girls. That was really good. Honestly, can I just say that that just made me crave for a black coffee, an extra shot black coffee that you can get only in Kings. Well, the one I'm imagining you can only get in Kings with that quality of service. Thank you so much for uh, talking about that. Honestly, Kings is, is home for a lot of us. And um, yeah, it's interesting to think, to know and realize that actually 
it is an extension to our church. You know, the River of Life community, it's not, it's not just here. Well, uh, it's not here at all. <laughs> it's actually everywhere. You're, you're wherever you are, you are the church. And we can be the church in Kings. This is exciting. This is awesome. In case you're new and you're watching this for the first time and you're like, what are you talking about? Then I want to let you know that you don't have to believe in any of this to belong here. We are a church that want you to belong before you believe. Okay, get to know us. Let's hang out um, here in the River of Life Church. Just to let you know what we do believe. We believe that uh, before COVID-19, way before COVID-19, there was this virus. And there is this virus that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's called sin. That's what we believe in. And this virus has been contaminating everybody. And it's it's in all of us, but we have a savior. We believe in a God who is real. His name is Jesus Christ. He came to save us from this virus and he died on our behalf to take away that penalty that was for us. Okay. And, and now, and then he rose again. He's alive today. This is what we believe in just in case. I just thought I'd be upfront about that, that he is alive right now and he loves you and he cares about you. We've been in this really cool uh, series lately about wisdom, wisdom, and, and it's been extraordinary. If you've missed it, I want to encourage you to go back on our live stream, our website, and catch up. We've had Pastor Mark, Pastor Duke, Pastor Helen speaking on this topic, and it's been super exciting. I'm going to continue today, and I'm reading from the book of Galatians, the letter to Galatians written by Paul. So if you've got your Bible handy, this would be the time, Galatians chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 16 to 23. So here we go. Verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. I'll say that again. This is Paul writing. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation of the law of Moses. Verse 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. And here Paul then gives a big list. So here we go. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Are you ready? This is the fruit that is produced in our lives by the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Don't you love that what the Holy Spirit produces in us is the exact opposite of what our natural self craves and, and desires? You know, like the opposite of jealousy and, and all these other sins that were listed here. Selfish ambition, idolatry, outbursts of anger. You know, I love how, uh, you know, for some, some, some of us listening to this, we can be like, oh, yeah, you know, some of those things were pretty, pretty dark and intense, and I cannot relate to, to none of those. I love how Paul throws in here things like envy, dissension, so, you know, which is simply a bad way uh, to argue with somebody, like your argument ends up in fights. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have noticed any of this lately, uh, in your lives around you, but honestly, like especially in social media, people just not knowing how to disagree in a healthy way. So, 
And I'll read out verse 22 just one more time. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. I love how he says the fruit and all these words that I've just said are like different flavors of that one fruit. It's beautiful. I want to invite you guys out to join me in prayer. Um, so if you, if you don't mind just bowing your head and closing your eyes, Jesus, thank you that you are here. Thank you that you are with every single one of us right now. Thank you that you're alive and that you love us. Jesus, I pray that this morning as we dive into uh, the Bible together as a family, I pray that you will speak to us. Jesus, um, use, use me right now the way you want that we will learn together what it is that the Holy Spirit is whispering to us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So let's go. Um, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever found yourself running out of something? Like running out of anything you can think of. Like you check the cupboards and you're running out of biscuits. I love biscuits. Digestives. You can't have your tea with no digestives. Or you, or you, you look in your house and you realize you're, you're, you're lacking something. Some random soap, shampoo. Well, I, I've not had that problem recently. I don't, I don't really need shampoo. But like other things uh, that you may be running out of um, that you, you, you re realize in the last minute, oh, actually, I'm out of this. I'm completely out. Like, and, and like one of the terrible things that you don't want to run out of is toilet paper. I don't know why that just came to mind. But that is about, I've been in some situations. But let's move on. Uh, I'm just thinking, see, at the beginning of lockdown, we had a lot of people, uh, you know, stocking so much toilet paper. And I was like, all right, I'm not alone in this thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm so glad. Can't you believe that from that moment where everybody was going wild with toilet paper, now fast forward, we're in October. Come on, I need to be careful my ADHD here. I'm going crazy with the, um, going out of topics. Um, here we go. We are in October. We're in autumn. We're in autumn, and this is exciting. We're already uh, well into the year. But going back to the thought, running out of stuff, running out of things. The reason I'm asking that is because there's other things that we can run out of, like Patience. <laughs> Can you relate? Um, have you ever run out of peace in your life or kindness? Have you run out of joy? This morning, I want to talk about a supplier. <laughs> I want to talk about a supplier that will bring all of these things uh, to you. These things, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, Let's dive into this together, okay? The fruit of the Spirit was never meant to be um, one of those things um, that you have as a fridge magnet in your, in your house. Um, I don't know if you grew up, well, I grew up a Christian, and, then, and in my house I would find a lot of these things, love, kindness, peace, joy, faithfulness, gentleness, and I'd find this in the, fri in the fridge door as magnets, and it was all pretty and exciting, poetic and beautiful, whatever. Uh, but it was never meant to be that. The fruit of the Spirit is actually meant to be evidence in your life and in my life that there is a living God who is constantly changing us and transforming us, okay? I'm going to dive into the points that I've got here this morning. I've got three. It's going to be really quick. I'm going to dive into point number one. Here we go. Point number one this morning is I want to encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life. Allow it. It's simple. This is how it starts in, in the verse. We were just reading just earlier on in Galatians. Um, Paul, he starts off by saying, so I say, verse 16, Galatians chapter 5, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Davi, why are you saying that? Well, I believe that when, when you become a Christian, okay, when you become a Christian, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have 
or experience any desires that are sinful and wrong anymore. It's not like that's completely gone. Being Christian is not about repressing those desires either and just kind of trying to like shut them down. It's like, oh, don't think this way. Don't, this is wrong. That's a very, very hard way to live. And that is not what we are called to do. Being a Christian is not about that. Being a Christian is about allowing the Holy Spirit to produce new desires in our life, fresh desires. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, when it says, um, on earth as it is in heaven, do you know what I find super exciting about that? It's because that's Jesus telling us that there is a way that we can actually live on earth just as it is in heaven. We can unlock heavenly things while he's still here on earth. Like, how exciting is that? Like, I don't know about you guys, but we don't need to wait till we die to go to heaven. We can already experience heaven while we're still here on earth. And we do this by letting the Holy Spirit guide our lives. Point number two, God is going to continue to craft you. He's not done yet. God is going to continue to craft you. In case you're new, and you've not been to church ever, and you're just connecting with us today, I just want to remind you, I just want to let you know, maybe for the first time for some of you, that you're not an accident, that God actually created you with a purpose, and that God looks at you right now, and he's proud of you, he loves you. Do you know there's nothing that you could have done that would completely eliminate that love that he has for you? I'm going to read a quick passage from Philippians It's just one verse. It's here. It says, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Here's the reality of being a follower of Jesus, right? God is crafting us every day. He's changing us. You know, a lot of people, they're talking about change and how they're not comfortable with change. The fact is that we are built for change. We're built to be changing and growing. You know, you're you're born as a baby and you start getting old and it's part of life. (laughs) We change. And, and, And God wants to change us to the better. Do you know who you are today is not who you're going to be next week. Think about that for a second. Who you are right now is different than who you're going to be next week. Here we go. Sorry, I just lost um, my notes. Even if this is something that you're thinking, Davi, um, it doesn't feel like that in my life at the moment. Regardless of how you feel about it, that is the reality that we constantly change. God is going to keep changing your life. Um, The reality is that God loves you so much. He loves you so much that you can have hope today that he is crafting you into a better version of you. And I don't know about you, but I find that super exciting. That was point number two. God is going to continue to craft you. And point number three. Let the fruit of the Spirit become the fruit of your Spirit. Say that again. Allow the fruit of the Spirit to become the fruit of your personal Spirit. Some people see these things as events. You know, when you talk about fruit of the Spirit and all its its different flavors and everything. Um, Things that you do instead of possess. So, for example, patience, for a lot of people, is, a, is, a, is something that you do, like an activity. You, I, I was patient today. Yeah, um, or for some people, it's an, ev- it's an event. Kindness, it's an event. I was kind at some point, or I, I experienced some joy for a little while. There's a lot of people who do good things, but don't possess those things. You might visit the fruit of the Spirit here and there, but it doesn't mean that you have it inside your own life. 
Experiencing peace, trust me, experiencing peace as an event is completely different than having the Holy Spirit produce peace in your life that doesn't run out. <laughs> Did you hear that? Something that comes from the inside out, all these different flavors, like we talk about gentleness, we talk about joy, all these things were never meant to be events. They are flavors of the fruit of the Spirit that were to come from the inside out. You don't have to be stingy with this thing. <laughs> this is not something that you, you know, I don't know about you, but I found myself so many times economizing how many times I'm going to be uh, patient. Well, running out of patience here, or how many times I'm going to be kind. Well, I've been kind already enough times to that person. Come on, I'll, I'll do it one more time, and then that's on them. You know, it's not meant to be like that. When we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, it comes from the inside out. You can't help it. It comes out of you, <laughs> and it's produced in you by the Holy Spirit. You know, we can't actually do this ourselves, and that's the whole point of this. So just as we conclude here this morning, I want to encourage you to quit trying to pull this off alone, okay? This whole Christian life, instead of trying to pull this off alone, let's ask the helper, okay? That's his other name, by the way, the Holy Spirit. He's got another name called the helper. Let's ask the helper to interfere and change things inside of us from the inside out. Um, I want to invite you to close your eyes, bow, bow your heads, and let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help us with this together right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you have given us the helper, that when you died and rose again and you saved us, you went to heaven, but you didn't leave us here alone. You gave us the helper. Jesus, I pray that you will give us the strength and humility and wisdom that it takes to allow the Holy Spirit to take the driver's seat, <laughs> to allow him to take over and to point us to the direction that we need to be going. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, Jesus, for all the challenges, all the changes. Thank you that you grow us. Thank you that you're with us. And as we enter this autumn season um, right now, Jesus, I pray that we will not um, forget to prioritize the Holy Spirit in our lives and his will in Jesus' name. I pray, Jesus, that we will keep running toward you and we will not get tired of this. Help us, Jesus, to do this as a community together. Thank you that we're not alone in this and, and we can do this as a church. Thank you for all the different campuses right now connected with us in their living rooms, kitchens, bedrooms, wherever you see them, God. People who are connecting afterwards um, on YouTube. Jesus, I pray um, that we will join forces together in this, in, this, in this race, God. And we will not try to do this alone one, one more day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. What a great message. Yeah. And uh, so it's so appropriate for today, I think, because we need, we need, to, we need that connection with Jesus, don't yeah. we? Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and I, I get really excited about the way that Jesus invited people to follow him. That, um, you know, wherever he went, he was, he was saying, you can follow me. <laughs> Come and follow me. And we had, he invited his 12 disciples, but really lots of other people followed him. And um, ordinary people, they were tax collectors and sinners. That kind of just speaks of, of ordinary people who had messed up lives and made wrong decisions and all that kind of thing. And yet Jesus said, you can follow me. And people criticized him for making it so broad and so open and, and for relating to ordinary people. And yet he said, it's not the healthy that need a doctor, it's the sick. And so if you're listening to Davi this morning and thinking, I'd love to, to have that. I'd love Jesus to craft me. I'd love to, to have that kind of purpose and joy that Davi seems to have. And, and, and yet I don't have that. Then, well, I want to be like Jesus. And perhaps Jesus speaking through me to you and saying, you're invited. 
You're not left out. You're not, you're not uh, you know, out in the cold. You're not disqualified. But actually, you are fully qualified to walk with him. You're quali fully qualified to, to have all the things that God wants to give to you and, and to follow him. And when we see what happened with people who followed Jesus in the Bible, then their lives suddenly came alive. I mean, it, they weren't bored anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and far from it. I mean, some of them have got killed for their faith, so it's, uh, you know, serious stuff. But uh, basically, they started an adventure. And, and that's my experience of walking with Jesus over many, many years, is that it really is an adventure. And it's an exciting adventure. It's an adventure walking with him and being in connection and, and fellowship with him all the time. So I want to be that invitation for you and uh, it's a very simple task to accept the invitation you know when you get something in the post that says RSVP then um, you don't really have to think an awful lot about how to craft your letter that says I'm coming you just say I'm coming <laughs> and it's really the same with following Jesus that uh, you know you don't have to have a polished response you just say yeah that's me thumbs up Jesus I'm yours uh, so I'll lead you in a simple prayer and, uh, and I hope that you can pray this with me. Let's pray. Oh Lord Jesus, I want to be crafted by you. I want, to, I want to enter into the life which you have for me. I want to put away the things of the past and, and the rubbish and the, uh, the things that are worthless. And Lord, I want to walk with you. So Lord Jesus, thank you for inviting me. I receive that invitation and I RSVP, yes. Come into my life, Lord. Change me from the inside. Thank you, Lord. I surrender my life to you now. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, then we'd love to hear from you because we'd love to help you. And we're here for you. And, and as the girls said earlier, you know, we're a family, whether it's kings or whether it's church, then uh, we are really a family together. We're home. And uh, so please do get in touch with us. Uh, there's a, a number on the screen there. That's a great one to phone. If you want to text me, then I think my number will come up shortly as well. If you want to email me, if you want to connect, if you're chatting online just now on live stream or on Facebook, then, uh, then, then just do that. You can do it personally as well if you want. You don't have to let everyone see. Just connect to, to Lydia or whoever is running the chat. Uh, or people that you know. But, but the base, base, main thing is just tell us and then we can help you and uh, kind of draw you in and support you. Fabulous. What a great service it's been this morning. But you know what? We're not finished yet because Duke and Morag have got... Uh, a super song called Heart from God. That I mean, You chose that, I think, to go with your message. So Heart of God, I think it is. So I'll pass over to Locker Briggs and uh, to Duke and Morag. <laughs> So 
Super song and um, so powerful words, such powerful words as well. So, uh, yeah, really touched me anyway. Uh, and uh, singing along with that, Helen, just remind us about sisterhood because it's this Saturday coming, yes, isn't it? This Saturday coming, all ladies are welcome. It's on a Zoom meeting, and uh, you don't have to let us know that you're joining, but it's helpful if you do. And just get in touch with uh, the, the screen numbers and let us know you'll be attending. But as I say, you don't have to, but you're very, very welcome. Just a time of encouragement, of, of ministry and sharing and a uh, cup of coffee in your hand and 
and uh, join with us. You're so very welcome. Super that we can do these things and, and open it much wider. You were yes. on, on with the Diamonds Conference yesterday yes, in I was. Glasgow, yes, uh, which you probably wouldn't have been able to go to no, physically. I but you no, can get, yeah, it's, it's, it was very good. Let's make the most of these opportunities. Mm. So, uh, also remember WhatsApp prayer tonight, six o'clock to seven on the WhatsApp group. And there uh, you are, it'll come up in a minute. If you're not on that, then please do join us for that. And I'll add you onto the list. And then we've got together on the Wednesday and we've had some great together evenings as well. Yeah. At the moment, we are looking at some other ministries and having them to feed us and then we can talk them through. Yeah, so, and then we'll be back on Sunday. Super. So we're going to say goodbye and we've got a lovely song as well coming up on the credits afterwards. Sing along with that as well because the words will be on the screen for it. But God bless. Have a super week and uh, take care. Control of the surrendered life.
Salvation. 